Hello, this is Darren Pulsifer, Chief Solution Architect of Public Sector at Intel, and welcome to Embracing Digital Transformation, where we investigate effective change leveraging people, process, and technology. On today's episode, we're going to talk about the people and process of digital transformation with special guest Ann Medea, former CIO of HSBC. Ann, welcome to the show. Darren, what a pleasure it is to be here. Really thrilled. You know, we met on a roundtable and your insight on that roundtable, I went, I have to have her on the show because <laughs> your years of experience and just, you just knew everything just clicked. It was kind of fun to, fun to watch, especially the other younger CIOs, the guys that have just started their careers. And you were like, oh yeah, you guys are in for it. You know? <laughs> It was, it was pretty, it was great. And, and you saw lights click on on their head. And I said, I have to have Ann on the show. So a welcome in. Tell, tell me a little bit about yourself, Ann. Sure, absolutely. And that session was great, by the way, dear. And I, I, I agree 100%. So I've got a, a many years of technology experience. I started at, um, actually started right out of college at Underwriters Laboratories as a programmer and moved to Household International. And then we were acquired by HSBC, a lot, very large global financial services organization in 2003. So I've got well over 25 years in technology, started as a programmer and moved into program management, project management. I have a lot of experience in um, acquisitions in sales of companies. I have had America's roles so um, Canada, US, Latin America, that was just absolutely phenomenal. Um, I have had, um, I was the global head of data. So I put the data strategy together for HSBC. Um, I became the chief information officer in September, 2016 and delivered major transformation programs actually throughout my entire career, new mortgage systems, um, new, um, uh, you know, new core banking systems, everything. So we've really done lots of organizational transformations. So it has really been a great career and I've loved absolutely every day of it. So it's really interesting. You and I actually have the same background. I oh. am a programmer as well. Ah, love it. I still program. It's, it's my way of relaxing, which is really kind of crazy. <laughs> so, um, I, it's a passion for me. And, um, so I'm glad we have that same background. And I was a CIO as well. So I kind of know kind of uh, the pains of a CIO and, yeah. and the fun parts too. So um, I think it's really interesting. You did a lot of transformational things. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about some of the challenges you've had in some of those transformations um, that you did. Sure. Well, I have had... I have, um, I've taken over. So a lot of times what my managers would say is we're having a problem with this particular program or this particular transformation. So can you come in, do an assessment, see what we can do. And then most of the time I was assigned or relegated to getting that through, right? So I did um, a, a mortgage transformation program for, for our mortgages. And a lot of times what happens is I will come in and do an assessment first of the finances. What do we look like? Are we over budget? Are we on plan? What does that look like? Do we need to ask for more funding? I'll do an assessment of the leadership team. Do I have the right people in place? Do I have the right skill sets to be able to accomplish this? Are we on target? Are we not on target? Um, are we, what does the business believe? Do they know that, you know, the status of this program? Do we understand clearly why we're doing this transformation program? What are the business objectives? What are we trying to accomplish? What do, what's the status of the program? Um, are we measuring the status of this program through metrics, through KPIs? What does that look like? So, so that, that's really interesting that they already had a program established and started. Mm -hmm but they brought you in almost kind of as a, almost like an internal business consultant, almost? Sure, absolutely. Yes, in, most, in a lot of cases, that's exactly what happened because the business, you know, right. Because we're, we're, taking, a, we're taking a program that is business driven and business led and we're leveraging technology to achieve those business, you know, those business um, 
uh, objectives, goals, right? objectives, yeah, goals, yeah. right? Business goals and objectives. And so you have to look at it, not just from a te technology is playing a really important role, but we can't just implement technology for the sake of technology. We must make sure that we are aligned completely with our business partners. Um, so when you came in, did you represent the business, the business partner that it was being built for, or did you represent... I, yeah, I guess you did, right? I mean, that's... I did. And the last transformation program I did, which ended up being almost a five year transformation program, wow, I came in at about two and a half, three years. I did. So I took over while I was the chief information officer. I took over as the program director for both the business and the technology side. And so we had to, and so what we really did is aligned each. So, for example, I had four CIOs that reported into me. So I had four CIOs, each one was aligned to a business. So retail, commercial, wealth, or investment banking. And we aligned them with their business partners. So anytime we had, when we talked about a defect meeting, if we talked about releases, if we talked about um, the business objectives for this particular type of functionality, they would come into the meetings together and completely aligned with the same messages, with the same, um, you know, trying to accomplish the same thing. So they, they were always completely aligned and that really worked well for me. Okay. So that that's a major tip that you have right there. It sounds mm -hmm. like when you have multiple stakeholders to bring them in together with the product owner who, or the solution owner, right? Mm -hmm. Bring them in together, sit them down together and say, agree, <laughs> or right understand and, and most of it i guess is understanding right it's the solution owner understanding the needs and also the bus the business units understanding um how it would work between them as well that's what it sounds like you did that's exactly right and so the nice thing was when the business partners went to their senior leaders they were giving one message and when my cios were coming to me and you know we were always aligned on the messages and so there was so that was a really big learning for me and really for the whole team you know it's it's amazing you think that would just be a normal yeah that business alliance but i can i can tell you when i was a cio that was one of the hardest things i had to do was to get the company aligned um in fact when i got dropped in a very similar situation it was a fast growing startup and IT was going in all different directions. Yeah. And uh, I found out why. There were six founders of the company. Oh, interesting. That was why. That'll do <laughs> and it. Each and each one of them had a little, control. I want this and I want that. And so I put a kibosh on them right away. I said, <laughs> everything's coming through a program management office now. Yeah. And uh, then I signed two guys just to be their grunts. That's I exactly. said, you get two IT guys to do your little special projects and um, they can go and do all that. But the rest of the company has to keep, yeah. you know, moving forward. So I love that consolidation. Bring, bring the people together instead of your, um, your solution owner trying to have multiple uh, maestros, right? Multiple. That's uh, right. And know. believe me, I have been on lots of programs where... We believe we understand the business objectives. For sure, we understand the business objectives. And then you get halfway through the program and say, well, not quite what I was looking for. And so unless you have that alignment, it just isn't going to work. And you're going to be spending a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of effort and maybe not quite achieving those objectives for the business. Okay, so let me talk about that a little bit. The program was five years total. You came in at two and a half. Don't the business objectives change over time? I mean, so it wasn't just a one-time meeting is no. what I'm... So how often would you guys meet to, to talk about the program and how it was going and shifting objectives? We had so many steering committees. We had so a full sort of document with those me so we had meetings at the very senior level of the organization with our global senior leaders to give the updates and provide 
statuses and where we really needed help. That was always the big thing. It was statuses, but I need your help for X. Gotcha. And that's when they would come in and go, great, I'm going to pick up the phone and I'm going to make that phone call. We had, uh, we had other uh, less senior meetings and then we had, uh, you know, the program was probably 15 different work streams. So the work streams themselves would have different meetings and different, how often do we meet? Um, multiple times a day, especially in the beginning, oh, yeah. multiple times a day. Yeah. And because there were different things happening. It was such a big program. It was so complex. You know, when you do programs like replacing a core banking system or a new mobile app or a new web interface or something like that, the integration is the biggest piece of this. And so you've got even, even, you know, functions within the business that weren't necessarily, they didn't have a, a role necessarily. Things weren't changing for them the integration was changing and that's what made it oh, so that's cool. really interesting. So you had to reach out beyond your typical stakeholders to find out who else was impacted by this new uh, solution that you were deploying. That's exactly right. Because if you have, you're putting in, for example, a new core banking system, which was one of the many things that we did, you're going to have implications to payments. You're going to have implications to GL finance, um, you know, collections, recovery, yeah. any, any function within the business side is going to be impacted. I had at one point, I had over 800 people on this program. Now it wasn't a hundred percent, but maybe some were 10%, maybe some were 20% people from all over the globe. Well, and, and, and that's the thing. You're only getting 10% of someone's time. Yeah. Right. Oh, well, yeah, I'll put that on the back burner. Cause I've got <laughs> I've seen that. I do that myself, right? Yeah. Yes. So yeah, but what, that's tricky. Did you see any process and organizational change because of this, this major uh, deployment? I did. We really focused on, first I had to come in and reevaluate the leadership team. Did we have the right people and processes in place? In some cases, we, in a lot of cases we did. In some cases we didn't. I also had people that I have worked with most of my career and I knew what they were capable of. And I knew that they would partner with the overall team to get this done. They were really, really good at what they did. They are really good at what they do. And so I had to come in and I had to evaluate that leadership team, make some decisions. Now there were definitely people that were um, nervous about that because they of had a course. prior leader, right? Yeah change is going to be really tough. And they had a prior leader and they trusted this leader, which was great, but we needed to take a fresh look at this pro at this program and what was going to work and what wasn't. And so eventually, and it took a couple of months, but eventually everybody came along because they knew our objective was to get this delivered for the business. And that's what really helped. They saw, they saw the effort that people were putting in. They said, I'm coming along on this journey. Yeah. That, that is really difficult when you do come in like that yeah. right it is um i really always tough. i always considered myself like a carpet bagger manager when i came into those situations right i'm coming yeah. in from the outside with new ideas and i was placed there for a reason yes right um it's a it's a difficult position to be in but i think uh, but i think a lot of times though you've got a team that is has been on a program for quite a while. In this particular case, it was over two years. In That's a long cases, time. Yeah. It is a long time. And they aren't seeing the progress and they're not necessarily sure that this program is going to deliver. And so they're wondering, you know, do I bail? Do I move to another group? You know, what do I do from a career perspective? Because they're so you know, they really want to see this program move forward and they really want to see it delivered because they've been at it so long and they, they just need somebody to come in and say, here's how we're going to do it. And, and that's what happens. That's what you have to do. You just have to come in. And what I did, something I did is I didn't sit in an office, actually sit on the floor. So every day I would sit with a different team. I would sit with the lending team. I would sit with the mobile team. I would sit with the, um, with the collections team and get to know people and, you know, at first people were like, why is the CIO sitting next to me? <laughs> yeah, I bet they were. <laughs> I, and then eventually 
it just became normal. I was just on the floor. We were just having conversations and people that may have had an issue, maybe, you know, speaking up that there was here's, here's something you really need to understand what's going on. They pull me in a room and say, and start drawing on a board and saying, here's how it works. Here's what I think. And then I would say, Oh, I get it. I get it. Let's raise that at the next meeting. And let's so you, you were there. getting raw information from people doing the work instead yeah. of the filtered stuff that's yes. going oh. through management chains because we all do it. I mean, come on, we all know that we do it. Yeah. Um, so that's that's really great. I love the personal touch that you had sitting out there with them um, and and listening to them. That's that people, um, that people side of you. I, I think there's something else you brought up that I thought was really interesting. The people on the team wanted to succeed. Oh, absolutely. And I think sometimes we forget that. Mm-hmm. Isn't it when, important? Yeah. When, when a project's kind of maybe gone off the rails a little bit or not progressing like you want, you have to remember the people on the team actually want it to succeed. Mm-hmm. The process is wrong. The leadership might be wrong for that time of the project. Um, so I'm glad you pointed that out. That's really important. Yeah. And, you know, I, I talked to somebody, one of my business partners, and she said when it was announced that I was going to be the program director, She said there was a sigh of relief, which really, honestly, um, made me really proud and really happy. It does make you feel good, doesn't it? It does. It was about two months ago. And she said, we took a collective sigh of relief because we knew you were going to pull this off. And I thought, oh, that's really great. Thanks for listening to Embracing Digital Transformation today. If you liked our episode, go ahead and give us five stars on your favorite podcast or video streaming site. You can also find out more on embracingdigital.com. Until next time, keep moving forward and do something wonderful.